Okay, folks, welcome back for part two of Fourth and Cordova. Here we go. Dog team coming way down there, so it gives folks a chance to get online again. Welcome back for part two of Fourth and Cordova on day one of the Fur Rondi 2022 Open Class World Championship here in downtown Anchorage. Thanks again so much to ASDRA, the Alaska Sled Dog Racing Association, for bringing this world championship to downtown. And to all of our sponsors, it's been a really exciting day of racing. Okay. That's Tony Blanford right there. Looking good. That's that corner. That's his redemption corner there. Tony coming back to finish what he started two years ago. He said at the Mushers Banquet, which you can see online on YouTube, that he really wanted to show some redemption. This was a tough corner for him last year where he had an accident, and now he is completing day one. He must feel great. Tony Bland for bid 15. We got He's a rookie out of Anchorage. We got a few more teams to finish yet, folks. This is part two of the Cordova and Fourth. We're still waiting on Tommy Bird, Carl Earhart, Grant Beck. Oh, let me turn this like that. Uh, Andrea Bon. And let's see, Marvin Cochran, I think, I believe is in there. And everybody else has gone by. So we're only about five more teams to come down the Cordova section here to complete day one. It's been an exciting day of racing here. The teams looked really good coming by here. Just a few minutes ago, we had a big rush of teams. Alex Crittenden, Michael Tetzner, Taylor, LaForce. Don Cousins was looking really strong coming through here. Brent Beck had a nice clean corner. So the mushers are all mushing nice and clean. We haven't seen any issues on this corner at all here yet, which is fantastic. Welcome back to part two of Cordova and Fourth. And uh, again, for those who are looking at the start list, let me go ahead and zoom out and give you the start list. Stand by. There you go. So all those first teams are in. We are waiting on, uh, let's see, Andrea Bond, bid number 16, Grant Beck, number 17, Carl Earhart, number 18, Tommy Bird, number 19, and I believe Marvin's still out there, number 13. Um, so this is, uh, it says Eddie on there because I photocopied his uh, announcing sheet this morning. You can download timesheets on the ASDRA, A-S-D-R-A dot org site. Um, there's a team at the top of Cordova right there, so get ready. Okay, so the second part of Cordova and Fourth is live right now. There's 117 people watching on the Fur Rondi page. We have a team way down Cordova right now, so you still have time to jump on the Facebook page, Fur Rondi, and tune in. All right, so we'll let you go, Kale. Great job today, and we'll check back with you again tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. And here we go. Let's see if this is Marvin. And how great is it to have Ed Streeper's voice on the radio here, champion of the Rondi in 85 and 87, announcing today he worked on getting everybody's names he didn't know dialed in and what have you. It's a lot of pressure. We're missing Jeff Barnhart, who passed away last year, and we miss him for sure. Looks like Marvin. Let's see. Wow, those lead dogs are charging, looking great. Yeah. All right, that's Andrea Bond right here. Let's watch her corner. All right, Gary Markley's partner. So we've seen Markley out here for years. That's his wife. Bib number 16. Look at that, looks great. Andrea and Alex Crittenden are only female mushers in the group. And Wendy, we have three female mushers. So Wendy Callis, Alex Crittenden, and Andrea. Really proud. We'd like to see a female champion again. It was so nice when Roxy Wright a few years ago. 
made history and came back out of retirement, won this race. The support and help of Arlie Reynolds and a bunch of great handlers. So there's Andrea out of Salcha. She did want to thank everybody at the banquet for all the support that Gary and she received during the year. They self-fund their operation, uh, but she said that the emotional support's a big deal. So hug a musher, support a musher, adopt a dog, get active with your dogs. Learn how to ski jer and can across with a dog who's right there in the house with you. Such a great relationship. We are all cheering on Carl Earhart. You'll see a lot of folks on this feed here. Carl is a firefighter and long time Alaskan out of Fairbanks, Tanana area. And we are so proud of him being in this race. He's wanted to be in the fur rendezvous his whole life. And we are just praying that he has a good clean run. Here comes a team coming up from Cordova. Again, all your support online is appreciated. The mushers come to this feed and look at all the comments and look at all the people cheering and it lifts their spirits and helps them get through uh, all the stress of getting all their dogs here and keeping it all together and having a good outcome. So lots of anticipation on the trail. You always have to be alert. You never know when a moose or a dog or a distraction is gonna happen. So incredible amount of focus and they all appreciate your love. Dog team looks like it's moving, moving well. On that. I'm is that a second team behind or is that just one team? Let's change our angle. Okay, just one. Or no, that is, let's see. Okay, here we go. He's cheering his on his team right there. That might be. Bib 17, Grant Beck. There you go, Grant and the Beck family. Beautiful looking dogs. On the home stretch of day one for rookie year for Grant Beck out of Yellowknife, Canada. Those dogs are charging home. That must feel good to Grant. Have a good, happy, strong team. Looking forward to the finish line. Three more teams. All right, that's what we're hearing. Three more teams to come down. Three more teams. Wanted to make sure I thank a few more sponsors here, folks. Linen Transport, Alaska Advanced Dentistry. New sponsor to the Ferrandi World Championship, and we appreciate that. Their staff are longtime Alaskans. Proud to support the sled dog races this year, and we certainly are grateful to keep this tradition alive. <laughs> Tudor Bingo have been longtime supporters as well of the Open Class World Championship. They're a charitable gaming Alaska way industry. Uh, every time you play, a little bit of money goes back into your Alaskan community. So stop by and check them out on Tudor Road. And thank you, Tudor Bingo, for your support. Pet Emergency Treatment, taking care of the dogs in the race and in your homes. So thank you, Pet Emergency. I do believe I see a team perhaps coming up on Cordova. That'd be one of the last three teams out on the trail right now. Uh, Coca-Cola of Alaska, enjoying a nice refreshing Coke while watching the races. I could use a Coke Zero right now. Uh, Longtime sponsor of the Open World Championship Sled Dog Races. Thank you, Coca-Cola of Alaska. We'll turn it around now. And we just got a few more teams. And then we'll be back with you tomorrow for the pre-race coverage. And Lucas, I think you're good. I think they're not going to call me anymore. Thank you. So, yeah. So I want to thank Lucas. He was holding that phone so CBS Sports could could call in and check on our checkpoint. Thank you. It's stressful. It is. I see. So he had to watch for teams and listen for the, uh, hey, fourth in Cordova. What's the update? So thank you. It takes the whole village. And we're just waiting on a few more teams, folks. We're waiting on Tommy Burr. Carl Ray Earhart out of Tanana. And I believe we're still waiting on Marvin. 
Okay, uh, Grant Beck, I just heard his name on the radio, so that must mean he hit that line there on the finish. Congratulations again. And there you go, some of our great audience members posting the times for today. Okay, I see a team down there, folks, and so do you, right? So we're getting excited here. Is it Tommy Bird? Is it Carl Earhart? Is it Marvin? And there's a raven. Ravens love going to dog yards and eating up the extra scraps, so it's not surprising there's a raven right here. For those of you who have gone on sled dog tours or visited kennels, the raven is a constant companion, cleaning up all the little bits of kibble after a dog has done its meal. There we go. There's our next team in. If I had to guess, it would look like Marvin's rough, but let's go ahead and see. Marvin's been racing 28 times in this. It's amazing, the staying power and the passion. So much work goes in this. It takes, I said it earlier in the start, it takes one to three years to build a Rondi team, if not longer, especially one that can compete. So congratulations to Marvin. It's 28th running. Lead dog a little distracted there. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the way. Looks like maybe a younger lead dog. Let's see how they do around the corner. Staying focused. Okay, you can see that right lead dog wants to go a little bit right. So he's got to keep that rope together. That might be what... That might be where we have a, a reason why Marvin's a little bit slower this year. Looks like he's having a little challenge with... Maybe some younger lead dogs. That's not uncommon. They get distracted. They have. Oh, he had to stop right there. He's got to hook down and get them lined out. Again, so sometimes it's a dog team's day to be all tight. Sometimes it's it's tough. So I believe that it's Norris who said years ago, you can't push a rope. So there's a race official going to help out. Jim was heading down there. Marvin's moving again. All right, Marvin looks like he is going to be able to go ahead and get down that line. Again, you could see it if you go back and replay that bit of video, especially him coming down Cordova. You got a little bit of that kind of wandering dog look. I'm going to go ahead and give my buddy a hug. There's Carlos, who came to we'll, Alaska and mushed we'll, for his first time. We'll, we'll be watching tomorrow, and then we'll be watching from Rosati's on Sunday. Yeah. See you, buddy. Okay. Be careful. Okay. Love you, man. Lucas, love you too, man. Lucas was our radio catcher and a new musher right here and a birthday boy. Hell yeah. Happy birthday. Tune in tomorrow. Love you guys. All right, so we got two more teams coming, folks, and we'll hold the feed for them. We're not going anywhere. Just uh, folks have to go on with life, so my good friends, uh, Carlos and his son Lucas, are now heading to Anchorage to fly back home. They came up for a week of mushing and to see day one of the Rondi. So they uh, now have firsthand experience as to the magic of being here in this city. Okay, so here's... He's got a line drag. Oh, so he broke a tug line on... On his uh, four set back on the left dog, he's got a tug line dragging, so that means he had to tie in another rope right there. Okay. Well, that must have been that dog that got loose and got away from him. So okay. he'll just be glad he got that thing back because if you don't bring them all back with you, you get disqualified. So you'll give up that little bit of time and just be happy that he's not out of the race. So Eddie Streeper was just explaining on the radio here, folks, that it looks like Marvin Cochran had lost uh, one of the lines on his sled and had to fix it right now jen sterling is wondering what's going on down on cordova I'm trying to keep everything in order here right <laughs> these are our officials who are dedicated until until every team gets home right so here we go let's zoom in Okay, so we're waiting on Carl Earhart and Tommy Bird right now. You can hear the radio. 
and so fun to see all the volunteers again that I've met throughout the years it's like a family this is the uh this is the way to do it folks you sorry you i'm trying to show you the radio here you get your radio and you tune it into 590 a.m or stream it in anchorage and that's how you get your checkpoint times thank you there are contributors all around the track that report i'm one of those from here we call into mike and ed streeper and then they go ahead and put it on the air for you and that's how this race has been operated for a bunch of years in the 1940s and 50s all the villages in Alaska and around the Yukon and Canada and everywhere tuned into the radio, listening to the Fur Rendezvous. All right, there he is, Carl. Great job, Carl. Look at that. He's holding the sled. He's got a dog in the basket there. That's fine. He's going to get them home. There's our brother, Carl Earhart, fellow firefighter, and Musher bringing home his first day. Rondi 2022. Congratulations to the Earhart family. Carl bringing it home. Got his drag mat on right there, keeping that line nice and tight so you can keep them for about six more blocks. So if you're an Earhart fan, let it rip. There you go, Carl Earhart heading in for day one finish. And I can see Carl has a lot of fans out there. He's been a wildland firefighter, protecting Alaska villages, cities and highways and infrastructure for years. Heck of a hard worker. And he and his wife, Jen, work extremely hard on their dog program. Okay, so that means we have Tommy Bird out there. He was the last team to leave, bib number 19. Carl was the second to last team to leave, bib number 18. So, looks like those two have held their spots. And so we're just waiting on the last team. That was really exciting. And it's great to have everybody joining in. Thanks for joining us and letting us know from where. That's really great. Jackie Jacobson. Tuk tuk tuk. Shout out to all the folks watching from there or anywhere. And again, we want to thank Azra and all the people in that organization who make this race possible, who work really hard to keep this dream alive, who coordinate with Greater Anchorage Incorporated, who puts a huge amount of energy into this. And we really appreciate Lyndon, Advanced Alaska Dentistry, Tudor Bingo, Alaska Dog Center, Pet Emergency Treatment, and Coca-Cola of Alaska. And there are many other activities happening this weekend in Anchorage, but the sled dog race has always been a fan favorite. It gives the whole city a chance to come out. Sunsets later these days. We're getting a sunset after 6 p.m. That's a whole different story than just a couple months ago when the sun was setting at 3.30. So we're really able to celebrate the beginning of spring-ish here. Temperatures were in the 30s today, and you could see how many folks enjoyed coming out, spending time in their city, eating great food, shopping, there's crafts, there's all sorts of booths. And I can assure you it's a really good time. I really look forward to it like everybody else, like you. And we're already looking forward to tomorrow for sure. Things will get very interesting tomorrow. And then we'll culminate on Sunday. We'll crown a new champion. And in one week from Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, it'll be the Iditarod. So Iditarod start, the ceremonial start is right here on March 5th, same street. And then they only go about 10 to 12 miles and that's just ceremonial fun. And then on March 6th up in Willow, Alaska, where I live at the Alaska Dog Center, they will start on the Willow Lake and do what's called the official restart. So it's a big fun time of year for Anchorage. There's downtown, there's the finish line. And we're just waiting on our last team here, Tommy Bird, to come up and over the hill here. So look at that, boy, this is great.
I hope you all had a super good day. I'm reading your comments now. Kelly Smith joining us from Warrington, Oregon. Thanks for joining us. Rebecca Mahaney, missing home. Well, home misses you. Adriana Earhart Parker, proud of you, Carl Ray, you bet. <laughs> Chokes me up just thinking about Carl, such a great guy. Lots of fans out there. Rebecca Mahaney again watching from Kentucky. Jackie Ballinger saying, go Carl, Ray Ray. Hannah Lauren Nunn, yeah, great job, Carl. So lots of Carl fans, we love seeing that. All that support makes a lot of difference. It's, you know, just imagine taking all your dogs and coming out here and risking so much of your pride and, and all the work you put in because this race is a tough race, unlike anything else in the world. 25 miles through the city, down the roads, through the parks, over bridges, through huge culverts, through all sorts of woods and trails. I remember my first time coming here in 2013 and I was just blown away. I set my camera up on the trail to catch Ego Ellis and Arlie Reynolds and all the great Ken and Lori Cheesick and the rivalries, Greg Taylor and Gary Markley and all those great rivalries. And I was one of those guys hanging over the trail with my camera being in the way. And so these dogs have to really navigate a lot. It's very cool to see them pull that off. And of course, uh, you know, you always want to see a good performance and a clean run. So here's our look down fourth. And what will happen tonight is the street crew will come out here just after the race is over. They'll clean up portions of this, open the street, and then tomorrow all back down again. And here's looking down Cordova for Tommy Bird. That's the team we're waiting on now. Last team to come in. Thanks for staying with us here. I hope you got the radio on so you're listening to some of the commentary there. I can get closer to it. Oh, yeah. He doesn't like us to remember that part, so don't tell his friends. Did, I, that, did I just see that live on the radio across the world? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, no, isn't that but, great? Yes, isn't that fabulous? But, but helicopters are a big part. Were a big part of, of it. And Eddie was reminding me that back in the day, he had him flying above him on his way. Yeah, it was really exciting. A few times the helicopter came down so close, I literally had to flag him away because the uh, sound of the <laughs> of the blades and the wind coming down kind of affected the dog team. And so, a few times they had to wow. give me a little more room. I wonder which channel that was. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. So that's our commentary on 5:90 a.m., folks dogs are able to kind of block out if you will as they as they race around town in, in this urban environment you know it really is they're very focused and i think a lot of that has to do with who's driving them too doesn't it eddie well it does and okay you know, wait now one more team are we going to see a team up there 300 feet above them you know what i mean uh, any radio intel a little bit leery <laughs> that kind of stuff yeah so while we're waiting John, okay. good crowd out there today at the hill huh yeah, it's not bad, and, and like uh, like Lindsay said, you know. As, as the okay, folks, it might be a while for uh, for Tommy Bird, so we're gonna go ahead and, and wrap it up here. I'll head down and uh, visit with some of the mushers right now, and we'll be joining you tomorrow. Uh, I like to do the pre-race right around 11:15 for about 20 minutes. Uh, that gives you a chance to talk to Buddy and some of the top finishers, and then. We take a little pause and we start the, uh, the race coverage right about four minutes from noon. Uh, and that'll be tomorrow and Sunday. So thanks for joining. And we're glad to have you always share the feed, have fun. Let's rendezvous.